Hello, Jess Too Good here, and it's time to talk about my most wanted LEGO releases coming in fall 2023. There's not a bunch of sets, but some very interesting ones I can't wait to get my hands on. Keep in mind, a few sets still haven't been revealed, which I'm dying to see, like the rumored LEGO Dune set, a set for Wish, a LEGO Star Wars holiday scene set, the inevitable LEGO Winter Village set, and Majesto's Workshop remake, which is rumored to be a Black Friday promo. You know how this is called a top 10? Dang it, it's a top 11 now. The new LEGO Star Wars Advent Calendar for 2023 has more interesting exclusive figures than the Marvel Calendar, but I'm less interested in Star Wars than Marvel at the moment, which is why that one ranks a tad higher in my priorities. I really like this Christmas sheave with a Death Star sweater, the festive Ewok, both of which are exclusive. I find it funny how this advent calendar actually shows all the minifigures from the calendar at the front of the box, and it really is a random bunch. I don't mind the Endor Leia and Extra Omega though. I also love the cute little reindeer gonk. The 2023 LEGO Marvel Advent Calendar is a set I really want for like two minifigures, and even that might be a stretch. Yeah, I think I might wait for this to hit target clearance. Last year's Advent Calendar at least was intriguingly tied to a Disney Plus special. This just feels like leftover stock. Random existing Iron Man, Cap, and Okoye figures thrown together, but hey, an exclusive Spider-Man. I like the Christmas sweater a lot, and spoiler alert for those who don't want to see what's inside here. Alright, you ready? There's a Christmas sweater, Black Widow. Less interesting choice for me with her symbol not being as recognizable, but still pretty cute. Random overdone Strange who has literally been found in a poly bag this year. At least there's a reprint of Wong from the 2022 Sanctum Sanctorum D2C set. While I have little interest in the Ahsoka show, the T6 shuttle doesn't really give me Star Wars vibes, it just gives me a cool spaceship in Lego. The $80 price isn't ridiculous, and I adore the stark red color scheme mixed with some gray and the peculiar shape, much more interesting than the previous LEGO T6. I do wish it had more space for other figures though. However, my favorite thing here are the minifigures included. All four figures are phenomenal. The Inquisitor may be the best castle LEGO figure of 2023. Okay, maybe if the Orc Bro didn't release earlier this year. I love this helmet piece so much. Hu Yang has a very fun new headpiece. I love Sabine Wren figures. 2015 LEGO Nostalgia up in here. And this update has her hairpiece I adore, an exclusive purple variant. And the new Ahsoka looks pretty darn cool, finally with an accurate headdress. The Ghost almost made my list for similar 2014 2015 Nostalgia, but I'm going to hold off on that, especially with its $160 price point. LEGO Friends continues to kick butt this year. The holiday igloo adventure is something seriously undertapped from LEGO, an igloo home build. Aside from the blocky LEGO Minecraft igloos, I can't think of a time LEGO gave us an igloo house as substantial as the one in this set. LEGO City is truly sleeping on this idea. I'm gonna say it, this makes me nostalgic for Club Penguin igloos. I never owned one as I was a filthy unpaid player when I was little, but the interior is just about as cozy, only missing a puffle. This 2D Yeti doll as a sticker is a bit creepy though. I love the appearance of the clear dome pieces which were just used in the lovely botanical garden set. I also love getting these cup pieces from LEGO Harry Potter dual molded to represent hot cocoa for the first time. The Frozen Waterfall is another unique frosty scenaric build, and the $50 price is pretty solid. The Harry Potter Advent Calendar is the best Advent Calendar of the year, even if I'm not really into the Wizarding World like I used to be. This has a whopping 5 exclusive figures, with our first ever Abbeforth Dumbledore minifigure, a rather long requested character in LEGO. The Hogsmeade outfits, which I believe are from Azkaban, have some great exclusive hats, the stocking cap in dark blue for the first time with Ron, the knit ski cap in red for the first time with Hermione, Uchanka in gray for Draco, I probably didn't say that hat name right. I think these are all exclusive casual winter torso prints too. Spoiler for a print of one of the builds inside, but I think this wanted poster is a new print. And the set doesn't resort to superficial micro scale builds like other advent calendars do. Thank you, LEGO. I'm a huge fan of LEGO City Pasture Planes, probably because of the nostalgia of the 2006 one being my first LEGO City set ever, and I like vehicles with standing room inside. See, this was like a surprise gift for me on Christmas Eve 2006. This new one is a chunky design like the 2020 design, using the same front piece which I missed out on buying. 
This is a bit more detailed than that release with more interior seats as this new version has no wasted space for a useless car to be transported like that 2020 version. Like the last, there's a lavatory in this build. I also love the side vehicle build, which I haven't seen from city sets before. I especially love the catering truck and the airport shuttle. I wish this set was cheaper than $120, but it's not too ridiculous of a price. The LEGO Gringotts Bank is long overdue. The previous building version was a facade of the bank. This takes it to a whole other level while still being an open face back building. This doubles as a Diagon Alley expansion for the 2020 D to C with a base plate at the bottom of the bank, scaled to other buildings in the previous set. And then this does something revolutionary. A whole underground vault build with the way to lock in the base plate, making a whole other way to display this. Both builds are so good. The bank has a really gorgeous wall design on the exterior and the slanted pillars appear. I just hate the spacing and the sign which are stickers as well. Such a disaster if you ask me. The interior is as spacious as I expect as a translation from the film. Some people were complaining about the depth but at the $430 price I'm totally fine with this interpretation and I like the builds for the teller booths in their respective lights. The underground vault uses some excellent greebled rocks and the winding coaster fits my Lego theme park fancy to a key. Even as an adult, this looks like it'll be so much fun to play with. This set also has a very good Ukrainian iron belly dragon build with a very sick unique molded head, though the build comes off a little bit too messy in its brick variety the more I look at it. Another welcome extra is the magical menagerie side building, just more to the Diagon expansion. The minifigure selection is pretty good. I really love the transfigured Rod and Hermione, both with exclusive hair pieces and prints, and the exclusive Death Eater looks sick as hell. Oh, and one easter egg I missed before are the gold pieces with a classic Lego dragon print on them. That's a nice touch. Great set, even at the insanely expensive $430 price. It's probably the best set on this list, honestly, but lesser in my priorities than some of the ones topping it. I love when a movie gets one set. I love vehicles with standing room in it. The hoopty for the Marvels movie not only fits these niches, but provides an interesting thick looking spaceship. Despite having a mostly gray color scheme, doesn't cross over into the boringness of gray Star Wars ships. Yeah, I want the hoopty more than Gringotts, fight me. I just wish the price was not absolutely ridiculous at $90. Like seriously, Lego? This size screams $50 as does the piece count in three minifigures. It's a highway robbery and the most overpriced set of the year quite possibly. Again, this has nice shaping. I adore the roundness at the front, not only with the cockpit, but with its sides and how it opens to have a rather substantial interior filled with some colorful knickknacks. The three exclusive minifigures are neat. I especially like our first MCU Miss Marvel. I know people were dissing this particular outfit, but I like the red, gold, and blue color scheme. It's just that price that weighs us down so much, but yeah, it's still pretty darn high on my list because I really do want this one. The $100 Walt Disney Tribute Camera is a rather unique idea. I feel LEGO can get away with selling a brick build for this classic film camera by slyly tying it into the Disney 100 year celebration. Notice the one above for 100. I'm just a sucker for film in general. Obligatory follow me on Letterbox mention and check out Just 2 Film. I think I like movies more than Lego at this point, and I dream to be a director. The build here looks beautiful as a display piece. I love the reel of Disney animation moments from Steamboat Willie to Encanto. I'm shocked there's no strange world. It's cra <laughs> sorry, that movie sucked. It's crazy seeing stuff like the rescuers in Jungle Book pop up on here. That will get sets on them, but dang it, I want them. And Encanto minifigures, please. There's a secret interior for Walt to animate inside with printed panels from the old mill short tied to Walt Disney's legacy with the camera. My favorite part is of course the minifigs. Two exclusive one pieces all together, our first Lego Dumbo, our first Lego Bambi, thank you Lego. This set includes our first figure of Walt Disney, insert jokes about this in the comments, exclusive headpiece and all, and the mini minifig is exclusive, perhaps Mickey as well, I'll have to wait and see. I really adore this one. I'm amazed LEGO hasn't given us more diorama sets like Peter Pan and Wendy's Flight Over London, a September 1st release. This is just a lovely vignette to display. 
I love the unique take on moonlit buildings here with a range of blues used. This set has some incredibly clever part usage with crate pieces and a fitting blue. This is an exclusive recolor of a hair piece here which slaps. I like the street lamps illustrated by crystal pieces in yellow. I really dig the glow in the dark moon and what just might be an exclusive clock face print. Of course, as a minifig person, I'm so happy to finally get Wendy, using that hair piece only ever used on a mini doll of her from a June set I didn't get. I just wish this set had the rest of the characters from the scene who are literally shown at the back of the box. It's just a sore spot when the set is a whopping $60. With these glaring exclusions, keep it at like $45 darn it, but this is just a perfect display piece if you ask me beyond that. And let me leave space for a dishonorable mention. These are the LEGO Sonic Brickheads, and I told myself I'd buy any LEGO Sonic set, but I think I'm going to skip these too. They just look really creepy. They're pretty horrible interpretations of the two characters we love. I mean, I love getting a set for Tails himself, but my gosh, the interpretation of this is like the translation of Sonic into that really bad popsicle. It just does not work. And my most hyped LEGO release of Fall 2023 is, well, an easy pick. The Fall 2023 LEGO Minifigure Series, Marvel Studios Series 2. I didn't finish most of these subpar Disney Plus shows, but the figures bring a great variety of new characters and interesting designs. And LEGO Minifigures are my favorite thing in the toy. Agatha is definitely my favorite figure of the series. I love Catherine Hahn. The character has a lot of fun in the WandaVision show, and the figure even captures her wink. And of course, purple is my favorite color. The Moon Knight minifigures rule too. I especially love the new hood piece on the titular character and the 1x2 clear print with a goldfish brick for Mr. Knight. While I don't care too much for the umpteenth Wolverine figure, it's finally cool to get his arm printed, especially fantastic with a dual molded arm base. The new Storm has a neat new hairdo, and Beast is so long overdue for a figure and came out perfect. I think my favorite part of the Hawkeye fig, aside from the exclusive hair recolor, is the adorable new tiny owl piece. Kate Bishop has an even better exclusive hair recolor with an awesome new pizza box print and the cute as heck Lucky the Pizza Dog. I think the Werewolf by Night figure should have been black and white though. Echo's new hair piece is intriguingly elaborate, as is her prosthetic leg piece. I adore both of those exclusive molded designs. The She-Hulk figure looks a lot cooler than her uncanny appearance in the show, and the Goliath figure has a decent color scheme for a suit similar to Ant-Man. Pretty darn good selection if you ask me, though I could hope that Series 3 has LEGO Owen Wilson. Anyways, that is it for my most wanted list. Thank you for the continued support, and of course, in the comments, let me hear your list. Subscribe here for more LEGO news and commentary, and I'll see you later. Peace out. Bye.